Mike Tyndall hits the dance floor. I am a celeb star is spotted cutting shapes with wife Zara in Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's unseen wedding reception photo, and is that you Camilla? If you've ever wanted to be a fly on the wall at a royal party, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have treated fans to a glimpse of members of the monarchy boogieing on the dance floor at their wedding. Mike and Zara Tyndall can be spotted cutting shapes in the background in a never-before-seen picture of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding reception at Frogmore House, while another woman who appears to be the Queen Consort dances nearby. The new snap was shared in the trailer for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex upcoming bombshell Netflix docuseries, titled Harry and Meghan, which is due to be released on December 8. The trailer, which was released today by the streaming platform, saw the couple share a considerable amount of private pictures taken throughout their relationship, from their May 19, 2018 wedding day to their decision to step down as senior royal and life in Montecito, California. One of the black and white snap shared in the trailer showed Harry and Meghan twirling at their wedding reception in Windsor, with his cousin Zara and her husband Mike dancing in the background with other guests. The snap focuses on Harry and Meghan, who are beaming on their wedding day and taking to the dance floor in an elegant twirl. Mike Tyndall can be spotted shimmying in the background, facing his wife Zara, Harry and Meghan are surrounded by their guests, who watch as the happy couple celebrate their wedding with their friends and loved ones. The snap is only one of a handful of never-before-seen pictures that made their way to the trailer for the documentary, which is set to air next week. The explosive trailer for Harry and Meghan's £88 million Netflix docuseries dropped today, with the couple sharing an intensely personal reel of black and white photos including several showing the Duchess crying. Harry is heard saying, no one sees what goes on behind closed doors just before an image flashes up of Meghan holding her head in her hands while speaking on the phone. In another image, Meghan is seen sitting next to Harry on a sofa, with the Duchess holding both hands up to her face while her glum-looking husband has his head tilted backwards. The other photos provide an intimate snapshot of the couple's life together, and include Meghan cradling her baby bump, Harry playing the guitar, and the couple dancing at their wedding. The advert could hardly come at a worse time for William and Kate, who are on the second day of a visit to the U.S. which has been overshadowed by a Buckingham Palace race row. The Sussex's 1 minute 12 second clip opens with a producer asking why do you want to make this documentary? Before more than a dozen photos flash up of Harry and Meghan sharing time together, along with one image of the Prince and Princess of Wales. Harry's voice is heard saying, no one sees what goes on behind closed doors, before viewers are shown the photo of Meghan in distress. I had to do everything I could to protect my family, the Duke adds later, the trailer finally cuts to his wife, who says, when the stakes are this high, doesn't it make sense to hear our story from us?
The Sussexes have been paid a rumored $100 million, 88 million pounds, for the Fly on the Wall series, which has left the royal family braced for more damaging accusations from the couple. It comes at an unhelpful time for the Prince and Princess of Wales, whose U.S. tour got off to a tricky start yesterday after a scandal over racist comments made by Lady Susan Hussey at an event hosted by Queen Consort Camilla. Ngozi Fulani said she felt interrogated by Lady Susan about what country she came from, despite being born in the UK and stating multiple times that she was British. Officials said they were taking the incident extremely seriously. The series is expected to air next Thursday. As the Sussexes unveiled their glitzy publicity push, William and Kate's troubles deepened today as one of the UK's leading lawyers claimed that Lady Susan Hussey also asked him about his heritage at the same function. Nazir Afzal, 60, Chancellor of the University of Manchester and ex-Chief Prosecutor of the CPS under Sir Keir Starmer, reacted to the row by declaring, racism is never far away. Ms. Fulani has made headlines around the world after Buckingham Palace was engulfed in a toxic race row that saw the late Queen's chief lady in waiting, and also Prince William's godmother, resign after asking her which part of Africa are you from. Mr. Offsell tweeted, I was at the Buckingham Palace reception at which Lady Hussey questioned the heritage of a brilliant DV expert in Gozi Fulani. She only asked me my heritage once seemed to accept my answer, Manchester currently. The royal family will be braced for further negative headlines when the Sussex's Netflix show airs next Thursday. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced their deal with Netflix just six months after setting up home in California in March 2020, saying they wanted to provide hope and inspiration by teaming up with the streaming Goliath. The Duke and Duchess said their company, unnamed at the time but now known as Archwell Productions, would make documentaries, feature films, scripted shows and children's programming. In a statement, the Sussexes said, Our focus will be on creating content that informs but also gives hope. As new parents, making inspirational family programming is also important to us. They added that Netflix's unprecedented reach will help us share impactful content that unlocks action. Ted Sarandis, Netflix chief content officer and co-chief exec, said at the time, We're incredibly proud they have chosen Netflix as their creative home and are excited about telling stories with them that can help build resilience and increase understanding for audiences everywhere. After putting ink to paper on the deal, the Sussexes were said to have welcomed cameras into their luxury Montecito mansion for a reality-type documentary, Page Six reported. While it's unclear on exactly how much of their home life the couple were prepared to share, they certainly did let Netflix cameras trail them on public appearances in 2021 and 2022.
When Harry and Meghan jetted to the Global Citizen Live event in New York in late September 2021, a camera crew accompanied them. And just over six months later in The Hague, in April this year, the Duke and Duchess were filmed at the Invictus Games, hugging Team United Kingdom competitor Lisa Johnston and meeting competitors and chatting to the crowds. One of the organizers at the event said the Netflix team arrived in six people carriers with caseloads of equipment. The film crew were given maroon bibs to help them stand out from the dozens of photographers covering the games and given exclusive access to the couple with behind closed door meeting with the athletes. However, when it came to the Queen's Jubilee in June, just a few months before the late monarch died on September 8, the couple were firmly told they wouldn't be able to film while attending the celebrations. Indeed, Meghan and Harry took a low-key role in the national event, missing out on key moments on the balcony of Buckingham Palace, which only senior roles were allowed to attend. Even before its release, the show has made waves on both sides of the Atlantic and it is expected to cause fresh turmoil for the royal family. Harry also has his memoirs, named Spare, on the way. Royal experts have claimed in recent weeks that these two bombshell projects will further set back any prospect of a meaningful reconciliation between the couple, who live in a $14. £65 million Montecito mansion with their two children, Archie, three, and Lilibet, one, with King Charles and Prince William. This summer, Meghan hinted that the documentary could focus on their love story. Speaking in an interview with The Cut, the Duchess said her five-year-long romance with Prince Harry is one of the pieces of her life that she has not yet been able to share with the public. The Duchess continued, the piece of my life I haven't been able to share, that people haven't been able to see, is our love story. But after the Queen's death the Sussexes were said to have wanted to downplay much of what they have said about Charles III, Queen Consort Camilla, and the Prince and Princess of Wales in their documentary series, according to a previous report.